Hello and welcome to People's Dispatch and Globe Trotter. Um, I've just finished reading a terrific book uh, by Allah Abdul Fattah called You Have Not Been Defeated. Um, it's a book of essays and speeches and Facebook posts and Twitter posts written by a remarkable young man, uh, a person who should be one of the key intellectuals of our time on technology. Unfortunately, for the past decade, he has been in and out as the guest of the Egyptian uh, state in its various prisons. Um, the book is sincere. It is beautiful. It is charming. Um, it's a book that people must read. Um, it's an incredible honor for us at People's Dispatch and Globetrotter to be joined to talk about the book, Egypt, her son, uh, to be joined by Leila Saif, uh, a professor of mathematics at Cairo University, somebody who herself knows a lot about protests, having been a student militant in the 1970s, um, having been a militant through her entire career, including, I gather, Leila, being pushed and shoved in 2005 in a quite important um, you know, a protest movement against Hosni Mubarak. Uh, welcome to People's Dispatch. Uh, I'm honored. <laughs> well, first, let's start by talking a little bit about your son. Um, he has been, as I said, um, for, you know, the crime of being a democratic person. He has been in and out of prison, recently sentenced again to five years. Uh, how are you feeling about this, about having your son in this situation? Basically, I'm very angry. Uh, I'm very, very angry. Uh, this is uh, yani. I'm, I'm angry and tortured because it's my son, but I'm also angry because what's happening to my son is happening to so many other young people, and it is a banner of the repression that that, that is. Uh, everywhere now in Egypt. Uh, to, I, mean, I, I, I mean, I have been protesting against the government, the different governments uh, in Egypt since uh, ages, yeah, <laughs> since uh, uh, the, the 70s. But uh, the present regime is really far, far more vicious than anything we have ever seen. Uh, and this is also, it's like madness. The, yeah, yeah, a regime that imagines that it can stop every single uh, dissident voice in a country of a, of a hundred million. I mean, I know India is, is much bigger than that. So a hundred million maybe doesn't sound very big to, to Indians. But still, 100 million is 100 million. I'm a, I'm a mathematician. And I know that in 100 million, there's always, there will always be 10, 20, 30,000 who are, yeah, yeah there, there will be far more distant than that, but there will be 10, 20, 30,000 who will not be silenced at any price. So trying to silence absolutely every different voice is really, yeah, beyond the pain. It is beyond the pale, and yet it's what um, you know the government has tried to do. The the book by Allah starts uh, with his writings around the 2011 um, January 25th revolution, when the uh, people of Egypt were able to uh, get rid of a, a person that you have been protesting about for decades before, for 29 years, and that was Hosni Mubarak. Um, what is the residue of those protests of the 25th of January? Does it, does any of the residue of that, you know, that stone in Tahrir Square, um, where you protested in 1972, um, does the residue of January 25th, which brought Allah to the international stage, does it remain? Yes, it remains. It remains in people's consciousness. Uh, it remains in um, yeah, yeah. Of course. I mean, 
this revolution has been uh, vanquished and uh, uh, there is very, very, very strong repression, very violent repression. Uh, so much, yeah, as can be expected, people are afraid, uh, afraid to protest, afraid to voice, they're, uh, but still uh, there people think differently. They, they are not the same as they were before uh, 2011. Uh, many, many value, many of the values for which we tried to work in the 80s and 90s and which, and, uh, which we tried to uh, propagate uh, in very small groups now are actually uh, what very large groups believe in. The fact that people shut up and are afraid does not mean that they do not believe in what we came out for in 25. And I, I get uh, evidence of that all the time. I mean, every, every time, every single day that I walk down the street, people stop me, uh, tell me that they are thinking of Allah, that they hope he will be out soon, that just any people, you know, a taxi driver, uh, <laughs> Uh, 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 a guy, uh, a delivery guy, etc. Uh, so there, there are tens uh, of thousands out there, probably even more than tens of thousands, probably in the millions, who have, yeah, who, who think, who. Uh, okay, they always knew that we were living in unfair times, but who have sort of uh, crystallized their thoughts, who understand that what is happening now is repression, uh, that, it should, that things should not be so, it is not natural, this is not the natural order of things. And among young people in particular, uh, any, it, uh, when they think that this isn't the natural order of things, they think they also think that they, there will come a time when they will try to change. Um, there, there will come a time when there will be an opportunity to change it. I mean, okay, all the people when they think that things are bad, they think that things are bad and probably will stay bad and this is it. <laughs> And you make the best of what you have. But young people, uh, are, are, they're not like that. They want, they want a better future. Uh, and of course, some, you know, a lot of them are trying to get out of the country to find a better future elsewhere. But after all, again, this is, we're, we're talking about 100 million, 60% uh, of whom are young people. So there is no way all of these are going to be. They have to find. Uh, they have to find the future here, and they're they're trying. They're looking for it. They 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 are not. Uh, okay, they they are uh, bowing to the wind for the moment, uh, or getting out of the storm, or whatever. Yeah, you know, but but they are not. Uh, they have not given up. They, they have not given up on change. And they have and and they know and and that's the difference that January made. They know uh, many faces who speak for them. They know that faces like Ali, like the other Ali who's also in prison, like Khaled Ali Ali's lawyer, that these people do speak for them. It's a good reason that Allah's book is called You Have Not Been Defeated. I think that's what you're you're talking about. Your your husband in prison in 1983, um, you know, in prison because he was a member of a left organization trying to drive democracy becomes a lawyer. Um, you know, the rule of law. I mean, what you're saying that the situation after January 25th and perhaps after Rabah Square, the, the terrible massacre of 2013, people don't want to return to the days when they don't have an obligation to rule of law or democracy or 
Oh, what you said very movingly right now, the future, 60% of young people need a future. They need to believe in something. Um, you know, the Arab Network for Human Rights Information says that there are 65,000 political prisoners in Egypt, Leila, 65,000 political prisoners. It's important that you say people want to believe in something and yet the state is imprisoned 65,000 people, not on criminal grounds, but political grounds. How does one even understand that? We live in terrible times, really. Yeah, uh, uh, all over the world. Uh, for one thing, uh, uh, all the so-called democratic states, which are certainly more democratic than Egypt, but I mean, you're in India, you know, and you know, you know, you know how many failures there are in democracy. All these states are either veering to the right, uh, or even if they are in the so this whole um, this whole new capitalist system, new liberal system that is that has the world in its grip. And that is yeah, making it impossible uh, for the moment. <laughs> Hopefully, it won't be impossible forever. Otherwise, we're going to lose the whole planet, not just Egypt. Yeah. Uh, uh, making it impossible to, to put right climate change, making it impossible to uh, protect the, uh, future generations from. Yeah, I mean, the excesses of making wars, make, making uh, the uh, privileges of those who are privileged uh, more, far more important than the lives of those who are underprivileged. These are the times we live in. And uh, every, it, it manifests itself in different ways. Uh, in Egypt, it manifests itself in a very crude way, be exactly because we had the, we had the revolution, because we had the revolution. It was a popular revolution, and we saw the possibility. We saw the uh, you know the, 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 the another world is possible and stuff like that. And so it, it takes this very 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 brutal repression uh, to to make people to Yani, yani, for a regime to hope that it can make people give up on that. Okay, you can hold on to power like that for a long time. It really depends on the circumstances, but you cannot stabilize a society. You cannot stabilize it. Egypt is not stabilizing. Egypt is all is going from one crisis to another, from one crisis to another, and the. Uh, the way the regime manages each crisis is by depression uh, or by ignoring the uh, poor causes and just uh, handling the manifestations and so on. You know, I uh, that's absolutely true what you said. You can keep control over a society, but you don't necessarily stabilize it. I think that's important. And in a way, I want to return toward the end to your son's book, which Fitzcarraldo has brought out. Um, you have not been defeated because, you know, in a sense, um, in his book, um, what comes out is an extraordinarily sensitive young man. I mean, here he is. He's he's in prison. Um, he's had a beautiful son, Khalid, who he writes about with great feeling. Um, he visits Palestine in one of the moments when he is out, he goes to Gaza. And the last essay in the book, Leila, is about Palestine, where he says, Palestine, you are always on my mind. Um, he's an incredible person. Can you just tell us a little bit about this extraordinarily sensitive and kind young man who should not be sitting? Well, Nobody should be a political prisoner, but certainly not this sensitive soul. Um, tell us a little bit about your son and why you are so angry um, that this young man is behind bars. 
Well, any, actually, I think anyone who reads the book can see that Ala is uh, very knowledgeable about many things. Uh, uh, very bright. Uh, he's uh, he was a hell of a good, and I hope he will be again a hell of a good software developer. And he, he uh, so and he 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 um I don't know how. I don't know how, how to describe this, but you know, he he he, he looks at things uh, in depth. For example, the, uh, yani the the three uh, uh, articles about Uber. <laughs> I'm very proud of these articles because you know they came out at a time <laughs> when. <laughs> None of this was, was obvious yet, uh, <laughs> uh, and 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 he was sitting there in prison. He was even, <laughs> and and he could you know analyze the situation <laughs> and see uh, how the how this kind of uh, you know uh, uh, corporation <laughs> corporation was going to work out. Uh, so it's it's a real pity, yeah, that he should be uh, in prison. And during this particular uh, time, the, the, this last imprisonment, which started in September 2019, he's been uh, prohibited completely from receiving any books or newspaper. He, he I has not been allowed to read. A single sheet of paper, except my letters once a week, uh, for for two and a half years. Uh, this is really, really, uh, yeah. This is torture. I mean, it's not okay. It's not torture like electrifying people and so on, but it is torture. It is mental torture. It is meant. It is meant to break it. And it's a pity because yeah, he, he has a lot to give the world. Uh, he, 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 every time, you know, he works on something, he, he, he puts something new in, he gets, he has a new point of view that is worth listening to and worth trying. Uh, he's a, And of course, there is also the fact that his son really, really needs him. His son is now almost, is now ten. Uh, his son really, really needs him. So all these things, and you know, for the he, he was out of jail for six months uh, from March uh, two thousand and nineteen to September, uh, but he had to spend every night in the police station. He was on probation. These six months. The things he did for Khalid, the and the amount of activities they did together, the difference they made to Khalid, are un were unbelievable. Uh, and even though he could only you know spend a few hours a day with Khalid, he could spend the night with him. Could... So and he he's got a lot, uh, and he wrote some some of the articles in this book were written during these six months. One one of the most beautiful articles. Uh, the one about uh, regeneration. <laughs> uh, uh, so he's got a lot to give the world. It's, it's a real pity that he should be just locked up and silenced. And he uses every opportunity that he gets to get his voice out there. He, uh, every time he has appeared in court, he's made uh, very big statements. Uh, very you know, extensive statement. Uh, uh, <laughs> the last, the, 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 the
he was <laughs> he appeared in court for a renewal of his detainment order, and he pointed out that to the judge that as he came in, there were uh, children uh, working uh, in, 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 inside the uh, the court area, uh, working uh, at renovations and building and so on. And this was against the law. <laughs> Child labor is against the lawyer honor. He knows this as a complaint. So you know he doesn't he doesn't let one opportunity go <laughs> without pointing. Yeah, he, he, the thing is, he sees these things actually. Most people just walk by these children; they don't even think about. But he sees the things, and then he, he doesn't. That's a charm to go on without pointing out. Well, that's mm -hmm. a that's a tribute to you and to your husband because you've raised three extraordinarily sensitive children. Each one of them seems to keep putting their you know foot into it and saying, "I refuse." Your daughters, Mona and Sana, um, you know, one follows their various activities. So, well done to you. You know that piece you mentioned, regeneration. I want to just read a little bit from there because it is really beautiful. He writes. Uh, you can become an agent of history instead of its victim. Make of your pain a revolution. Your suffering is resistance. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Um, so bravely put. Yes. He's so brave. And, and I, I mean, I, I want to say that I, uh, on behalf of, of People's Dispatch, Globetrotter and so on, um, we're very grateful for you for joining us. We're very grateful for um, your family for helping put this book together. But more than anything, Leila, we are very much hoping to be in Cairo with you to welcome the end, the quashing of all the cases against him and perhaps the opening again of that stone in Tahrir to reveal for Egypt a better future. Thanks a lot for joining us. Thank you. I'm honored.